In this video, I'll show you how to control a DC motor using an Arduino and a new part called a transistor. A transistor allows you to control things like motors that require more power than your Arduino can provide directly, so you require an external battery pack. Note that using a single transistor only lets you spin the motor in one direction. If you want to reverse the motor's direction, you'll need a part called an H-bridge that we'll cover in the next video of our Arduino tutorial series. As usual, let's switch over to Tinkercad Circuits, which is an online Arduino simulator, so we can see the circuit and the code side by side at the same time. Now you might say, wait a minute, there's no motor in that circuit, and you are correct. First, we are going to review a basic LED circuit that you've seen earlier in our tutorials, and then we will show how we can use the exact same code to control a motor that we are using here to control an LED with a button. To very quickly review this code, we declare a few variables, two constants, one for our LED pin, one for our button pin, one for the state of the button. In the setup function, I'm going to set the LED pin as an output, and I'm going to set the button pin as an input with the internal pull-up resistor enabled, which saves me from using an external resistor on the button. In the loop, function, I am then going to use the digital read command to read the state of the button pin and an if-else statement to check whether or not the button is pressed. Since I have the pull up resistor enabled, that means by default when the button is not pressed, it will be high, so I want the LED to be off and else, and when I press the button, that voltage will go low and I want to set the LED on. So again, if I run the simulation, you can see this is pretty simple. When the button's not pressed, the LED is off. When I press the button, the LED turns on. When I release the button, the LED turns off again. So you might think, okay, if I want to control a motor instead of an LED, why don't I just replace the LED with a motor in this circuit? And you can't do that because unlike small LEDs, motors require a lot of electrical current to run. Those little LEDs you use with an Arduino typically only require about 20 milliamps, which can be provided directly by the Arduino's I.O. pins. However, even small motors like the one you saw at the beginning of this video can easily require hundreds of milliamps, and larger motors will require even more. That is more than you can provide directly with the Arduino's I.O. pins, so you need an external power supply to control your motor, and that is where the transistor comes in. There are many different types of transistors, and we're not really going to get into the details or differences between them in this video. Instead, we're just going to introduce one type that is useful for controlling a motor called an N-channel MOSFET. MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. That is a mouthful. You don't really need to worry about what it means. For now, you just need to know that in Tinkercar Tinkercad, it's this part labeled NMOS. So we're going to drag this out into the circuit interface here, zoom in, and we'll see that it has three pins labeled G, D, and S. That stands for gate, drain, and source. And again, you don't really need to worry about the details of what exactly all of this means. You can just think of the transistor kind of like an electronic control valve. It's going to accept a control signal from the Arduino, which can be the low or no current at the pin called the gate. And then the other two pins will control the larger current flowing through an electrical load like a motor. So you can sort of think of it like the faucet for a hose. The gate is turning the handle to adjust the water flow between the other two pins, the drain and the source, just like you would adjust the handle on a hose to adjust the water flow from the spigot and through the end of the hose. To put the MOSFET in the breadboard, we are going to rotate it 90 degrees. You don't want to put it in the breadboard like this because that will be short circuiting all three pins together if they're in the same row. So I'm going to rotate it like this. Make sure each pin is in a different row. I am then going to rearrange the circuit a bit to connect the motor and the MOSFET. So we don't need the resistor. Again, motors require a lot of current with these resistors, you put them in series with an LED to limit the current flow so the LED doesn't burn out, but you don't want that with a motor because you want as much current as possible through the motor. I'm then going to take the pin that I was previously using to control the LED, pin 9, and rewire that over here to the gate 
pin of my MOSFET, which again is the control pin that's going to accept that low current, low power signal from the Arduino. Next, I'm going to start to connect my motor. So I am going to connect the negative wire of my motor to the drain or the middle pin of the MOSFET. I'm going to change that to black to be consistent with my color coding. And then I'm going to connect the source or the right hand pin, if we were looking at this upright of the MOSFET, to ground on the breadboard. So what will happen eventually, we haven't talked about connecting the motor's positive terminal yet, is that when I set this pin high on the Arduino, that's going to turn my transistor on and it's going to allow current to flow from the motor through the transistor in the drain pin and then out the source pin and to ground. And none of that larger current flows through the Arduino. It is all going through the transistor and it's going to be supplied by the external battery pack, which we're going to connect next. So I'm going to bring in this battery, change it to four. So I would get about six volts from four AA batteries. And now we are going to connect our power supply to the circuit. Now this is where you have to be very careful if you have never worked with an Arduino and an external power supply before. Many times with simple projects, you're just powering everything directly from the Arduino. The Arduino provides five volts from this pin. And right now I have that connected to both of my breadboard's power buses. This battery pack will provide six volts. And I do not want to short circuit that six volts to five volts from the Arduino. So you can see here, right now I have both power buses connected with this jumper wire I do not want to do that. That will create a short circuit and it can damage your Arduino or other parts in your circuit. So what I'm going to do is delete or remove this jumper wire that was connecting the two power buses and now they are isolated. I have five volts from the Arduino over here, which I am not actually using in this particular circuit, but in general, you will want to have access to that on your breadboard. And I will have six volts from the battery pack over here, which I'm going to use to power the motor by connecting my motor's positive terminal directly to that bus. So what happens when the transistor turns on is that power will flow out the positive terminal of the battery pack into the power bus, through the motor, then through the motor's negative terminal, through the transistor, and finally through this jumper wire to ground, where we come back to our final missing connection. You do need what's called a common ground for your entire circuit. So it is okay to connect the ground from your battery pack to the ground from your Arduino. You can leave the two ground buses on the breadboard connected. Not only is that okay, it's actually necessary. Your circuit will not work properly if you do not do that. So again, this is something that can be confusing when you start working with an Arduino and an external power supply. You want everything to have a common ground, but you do not want to short circuit the positive voltages to each other. This is very important to remember so you don't damage your circuit and so everything will work properly. Now you can see when we run the simulation that I can use the button to make the motor spin. And remember that we did not change our code at all. This is the exact same code we were using to control the LED. If anything, you might wanna go in here and change this variable name to motor pin instead of LED pin, but otherwise we did not change anything. And when I run the simulation, you can see that when the button is not pressed, the motor is not spinning as indicated by the zero RPM or revolutions per minute here. And when I hold the button down, the motor starts to spin. When I release the button, the motor stops. So this is exactly the same behavior we had with the LED earlier. The difference is that now when this digital pin goes high, it is turning the transistor on and the current to power the motor is coming from this external battery pack instead of coming directly from the Arduino's pins. Now here we are only turning the motor fully on and off. It's either at zero RPM or at full speed. And just like how you might want to control the brightness of an LED instead of turning it fully on or off, you might want to control the speed of a motor and have some intermediate speed somewhere between zero and its maximum speed. You can do that using the same code you would use to dim an LED. So if you've watched the earlier videos in our series, you should remember using the analog read command to read the value from a potentiometer and then the analog write command to dim an LED. So I want you to pause the video here and see if you can figure that out yourself. Add a potentiometer to this circuit and see if you can use the reading from the potentiometer 
to control the speed of the motor instead of just turning the motor on and off with a button. Again, pause the video here and give that a shot. Here is an overview in case you weren't able to figure that out. So I did not have to change much in the circuit. You don't have to touch the motor or the transistor at all, but I have replaced the button with a potentiometer, one end connected to five volts from the Arduino, one pin connected to ground, and then the middle pin connected to one of the Arduino's analog inputs. Again, if you don't know how to use a potentiometer, we have that covered earlier in our Arduino tutorial video series. Then in the code, I have changed things around and renamed my pins, so I now have a motor pin and a potentiometer pin. I also have variables for the potentiometer reading and the motor speed. You don't need to use the pin, code, pin mode command with the analog read and analog write function, so I actually don't have anything in my setup function, and then just three lines of code in my loop function. I use analog read to read the value from the potentiometer pin. That is going to return a number between zero and 1023, but analog write only accepts a number between 0 and 255, so I use the Arduino map function to convert that variable between 0 and 1023 down to a number between 0 and 255, store that in the speed variable, and then use analog write to set the motor speed. When I run the simulation, we can see that with the potentiometer turned all the way in one direction, the motor is not spinning, and as I gradually turn the potentiometer, the motor's speed will gradually increase until I've cranked it all the way and reached the maximum speed. As I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, this does allow me to adjust the motor's speed, but I cannot change its direction. So if you are doing a project where you need the motor to run in reverse, for example, if you are building a robot and you want the robot to be able to drive in reverse, we need another part called an H-bridge, and we will cover that in our next video. Two more quick notes that are a little more advanced than what we would usually cover in this tutorial series, but I do want to mention them for completeness. First, motors generate a lot of electrical noise, so that's not the type of noise you can hear, but it's fluctuations in voltage as the motor spins. You may see a capacitor in a motor circuit to help smooth those voltage fluctuations out. That capacitor could be in the breadboard between the power and ground buses, or even soldered directly to the motor terminals. Motors can also cause a large voltage spike when they abruptly shut off, and sometimes you will see a part called a diode in the circuit that goes between the motor's negative terminal and the positive voltage supply. So here I've put this in the breadboard instead of connecting it directly to the motor like I did with the capacitor, but you can see how it goes from, again, the motor's negative terminal, and then I use a jumper wire up to connect it to the positive voltage, so that's the same thing as just wiring it between the two motor terminals here. We're not going to discuss how diodes work, but the basic idea is this can help safely dissipate that voltage spike when the motor shuts off suddenly. So both of these parts can help protect more fragile components in your circuit, like transistors or microcontroller pins, from those spikes and fluctuations you'll see in voltage from a motor. But when you're just getting started out with an Arduino and using a small motor, you usually do not have to worry about them. If you are getting into a bigger or more complex project or using larger motors, that is when you would want to start considering including these in your circuit. But again, we're not really going to go that deep into this electrical engineering topic in this video series. For our other Arduino tutorials and cool projects you can do with an Arduino, check out the links at the end of this video and in the video description. For over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.